Hi guys, it is once again Glitch, this time with another video. This video will be a Nuzlocke, my very first Nuzlocke in fact. Now considering this is my first, I try to go easy on myself. Therefore it's not gonna be a hardcore Nuzlocke, the rules applied are as follows. Any Pokemon that faints is considered dead and must be released or put in a box. In my case I put them all in a box. Other than that, only the first Pokemon you encounter on a route can be caught and used. That's what I did for the entire run. Now do keep in mind, I didn't use a dupes clause for this run. Um, so I have like f three Paralippers I think in the end. But doesn't really matter because I only use one of them at the same time, right? Whenever my team was wiped out, I started the game over, had to retry from uh, the start. The starter was chosen based upon my Pokemon Trainer idea, meaning if my Pokemon Trainer ID's last number was either 1, 2 or 3, I went with the Grass Starter. If it was 4, 5 or 6, I went with Fire. And 7, 8 or 9 is Water. If it was for ch by chance 0, that would mean I pick my own starter. Of course other things like naming all your Pokemon is another uh, rule I did apply. I also r applied the rule of not outleveling content, meaning the next gym you encounter, the ace of that gym is the max level you can go for at the moment. Of course battle style is set to set, meaning you won't, won't be able to anticipate switch-ins from NPCs. Held items were allowed to be used, however items during battle like for example healing potions, uh, full heals, stuff like that, I did not use. So without further ado, let's start with the bloopers, the fun part. Let's go. All of the bloopers have been recorded live on my Twitch, which you will be able to find in the description down below. Alright, we're ready for this. Pass. Did you say final? <laughs> Is this the last one? I don't think so. I hope it's not two electric Pokemon, but it's gonna be Plusla and. <laughs> it is right. Is one of my Pokemon gonna die? So that's what happened. The worst part is just the three Pokemon I had, two of them were weak to electric, and they got two electric Pokemon, right? So it's definitely end of the line here. Don't mess around, just go for the win. That's all there is to it. First gym, once again. First gym was never an issue. And with that being said, it's time for redemption. After three fails, I decided not to fail anymore. And I decided to actually win the game. Now, what did matter, maybe, is that I finally got a different starter. As you can see in the background, arguably Mudkip is the best Pokemon to start with in this version of the game anyway. This is Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, by the way, not Ruby. I took it upon myself to take revenge for my previous loss. For the first gym. Um, so Roxanne goes down here uh, pretty confidently actually. The most confident win I've had for Roxanne out of all of them I bet. But yeah there we go. Pretty easy but then again the typings match up well for me so I just get lucky in that regard. For the next gym Brawly is not an issue at all. I don't think I've had any issues with it either of my run throughs. Uh, neither do I in this run. Of course, having Beautifly is just a huge uh, benefit over him. There's also, I think, Abra you can get, uh, Dustox as well. There is a couple of Pokemon that actually clear this gym pretty confidently. Like, for example, uh, the last run I did it with uh, Shroomish. Just one Shroomish for the entire uh, fighting gym. Um, easy, is easy enough. The next big thing is May, your rival. The one that actually beat me on my first attempt. But this time around, Things go a little bit different, as you can see. Uh, Slugma is not really a big deal. Well, he's got a lot of damage. Um, let's not front about that. But regardless of his damage, I think I did pretty well. Also, like for example, my team at this point is pretty balanced. Not gonna say it's the best team ever, 
but for a Nuzlocke it's pretty well balanced in my opinion. Anyway, I shouldn't have gone on keep going for my, with my Laudrit on this position, but it is what it is. I still need to change my mindset into a mindset of actually uh, being more careful whenever I'm playing a, a Nuzlocke. Being, playing more careful is very important in Nuzlocke's because of course, like for example, crits can be the end of a run. Just a normal hit can be the end of the run. You have to be very, very careful in general. And that's something I still need to, I still need to switch my mind a little bit. Also, this is my first Nuzlocke, so for me, at this point, I don't really... I was very scared of this rollout, by the way. This rollout, I was already seeing it uh, wipe my team, but I'm glad I just could stop it in time. In all honesty, no cap, no front. I was never really that scared of White Sun, because, like, of course, my starter is ground, which means he's, like, immune to electric. Also, he's electric steel for the main part, so it would be fairly easy to go just for ground moves or fighting for that matter. I have some, I have a fighting Pokemon and uh, several fighting moves, which makes it very, very easy to beat this gym. This gym was never a threat. The only thing is, I did not really have any ground moves, but like I said before, the fighting coverage made up pretty well for this. The only ground move I had was pretty weak in general. But regardless, it's fairly easy, and he has no chance versus ground Pokemon. Definitely if you combine it with the water typing, which means steel moves will not be very effective either. So, Watson, not a big deal. Flannery shares a lot of the same comments that uh, the previous streams did. As in, my ground moves are very strong. Of course, he uses Drought to his advantage, which is a smart play. But uh, like I said, ground uh, surpasses all of that. So the Drought only works versus water moves, right? Then again, he brings out Nummel as well, which is like four times weak to water. So yeah, no chance there. Then of course, Torkoal is bulky Pokemon, but ground moves will deal with it regardless. Flannery not that big of a deal fifth gym leader being norman or as i would like to call him dad um he's got very scary pokemon this is the fight i was anticipating the most towards as in i was prepared to lose a pokemon not really prepared but like i expected to be losing a pokemon regardless uh, reason why is because these are normal pokemon with a ah, very high attack stat um, combined with a retaliate move which is like I think in many cases it would be a surefire way to lose a Pokemon in a Nuzlocke that's of course disastrous in this case however nothing happened of that sort seeing that Slaking drop in as first one Pokemon for Norman in the fight is kind of uh, intimidating at least I feel like um, then again, I have my big hands. Big hands is a big boy. He's got some very strong power into it. Also, the fake out, of course, with a lot of damage. Actually, the fake out on uh, my big hands did a lot of damage to a lot of Pokemon. Some Pokemon would be uh, half HP beat by it. But I switch out here to get the Intimidate out. Um, and I also knew it was a free switch because of Truant, right? Then again, like the Chip Away, also a very strong move. Slacking was very, very scary. Now, of course, with, because of Truant, you get a lot of turns where you actually have free damage, which was very necessary in this case. I bet if Slacking had another ability, this would have been a very, very, very difficult fight. Now, of course, playing some um, some tactics here, switching into uh, big hands for another fake out. Then again, I didn't expect him using a potion here but not that big of a deal the strategy i was thinking of here was actually using fudge to whirlwind um, the next pokemon coming in before it could retaliate so they lose the double damage on the retaliate move because of it, it's only double damage for one turn then again it's still his first pokemon <laughs> i've been fighting his first pokemon for over two minutes now which is like that's one thing I learned in Nuzlocke, it's not a big deal 
taking a long time killing them as long as you make sure that all of your Pokemon, all of your Pokemon make it out alive. Mm, that was very big for me. So at this point, also like I said before, this is the gym where I anticipated to lose a Pokemon. This is the gym where I actually was the most afraid of so far up until this point. So for me, uh, seeing this, I was taking my time. I was definitely playing safe 100%. Now, at this point again, I switch out because I ex I, the next Pokemon is coming in. And every time the next Pokemon is coming in, I expect a, a very big retaliate to, to hurt, of course, to hurt a lot. Then again, I tried to Silverwind, hoping to get the boost. But then again, yeah, you know, you know how it goes. Ancient power boosts, they never happen, so not for me either. Anticipating Whirlwind. I didn't make it out in time, so he was faster, which is actually made him get to retaliate off. But it didn't kill, even on my fudge. That was crazy. I did not expect it to not kill. I was... Sure, I lost my uh, fudge here, but then again, look at the chip away, just a normal chip away, Do it. the damage on Danger Rod is insane. Then again, seeing as his slacking is already out, that means he cannot retaliate with slacking. That's going to be big for me, because a retaliate on slacking is, I, I bet not even big hands can survive it. So therefore, it's very good that it... Uh, that I switched it out regardless, even though I took the, the Retaliate in the first place from Vigoroth, right? Vigoroth is also a big uh, big damage Pokemon, right? He's got a very good attack stat. Regardless, I just whittle down the next Slug King. Uh, I'll take my time again. Well, in this case, I actually use super effective moves for a change. Um, but this time I'm trying to figure out what to do because I expect that Vigorot to switch in again. I w wanted to whirlwind him again, but then again, I, I figured I'm slower than this Vigorot. We've seen this in the past. Look at it. This damage on a on a retaliate turn is gonna be it's gonna kill one one of my Pokemon 100%. So I got lucky that I switched him out, um, whereas he couldn't use it as a double effective move. I double double base power move at least, and yeah. That's just big win for me here. Other than that, okay, Vigorot comes out. Vigorot, I don't think can kill, uh, can one shot. Big hands. Now I have to check because it's been a long time and I do not remember what happens. I switch out to the most Pokemon with the most HP or Intimidate. Yeah, of course. But I don't think he he actually did use Retaliate, right? Yeah. So I get lucky again. And there it is, actually winning the game. I'm at this point. I'm so stoked, just because of the fact that uh, that we made it out alive. Anyway, so Norman, one of the biggest fights so far. Well, definitely the biggest fight so far. Not only just because of it's the highest level gym up to this point, but just because of the sheer power he has and the very scary movesets he uses. Either way, we made it our life. This is a big one for me. This is where I uh, I was so happy to win this. Alright, and then it happens. The wonderful thing everybody hopes and wishes for. But on we reach Route 119, which has one very rare Pokemon. And in a Nuzlocke, you daren't hope to catch it. But for me, it happened, actually. I avoided encountering any Pokemon in the start of the route. So I actually, like, I was maneuvering through the, the tall grass, like, uh, very sneaky. And I made it out without encountering any Pokemon. I made it to the water, and then it happens. I find Feebas, and I catch it. That's amazing. It's going to be very, very useful in the later game, as you can see. But for now, it's useless, of course, because... You need to get the stats up and it requires a lot of berries so it actually took me a while before it actually became a useful Pokemon but when it did oh boy then this moment happened now let's listen to that once again and once more as we saw before I had issues with May in the past but 
Let's just say those are in the past. We'll make short work of her this time. Surf, Lava Plume and Giga Drain. Now as you may or may not know, next gym is Winona, Flying Gym, where either Rock, Ice or Electric would be very useful. Now as I just lost my Electric, it was up to Plusla to do the trick. And I found just about the right one. Yes. Pulse. How about Pulse? <gasps> That's huge! Ice is so big, bro. Now guys, Winona. As I said before, I was afraid to lose Pokemon on the last gym. But on this gym I was afraid to lose the game. Just because of the Swallow could set up right. Either way, I always start out with um, Hariyama for the fake out, which is huge, as you can see right here. It's a big fake out. Then I went for Rocktomb. I figured it was actually a bad idea, but it worked out in the end, so GG. I mean, if it works, it works. Then whenever Pelipper comes out, obviously I will switch into Pulse. I did expect a lot more damage here, but I guess I tanked that really well. Then of course Discharge X4 is always gonna kill Pelipper. He brings in Altaria straight up, which is obviously where I use my Hidden Power Ice to one-shot this one as well. Um, and that's when we're actually pretty well off. I did decide to switch out plus just because I don't want to lose it in this fight. And I'm pretty sure Volcano has no issues with Skarmir anyway. So that's the fight. It was pretty straightforward, pretty easy. I did sweat a little bit, which I shouldn't have. Like, as you can see, the fight was actually fairly confident. There you go. Okay then, let me just tell you about this girl named Jennifer. She lives on Route 120. She has only one Pokemon of level 36, which you would expect on this route. Well, it's a bit high on the route. But let me talk about her because she has a Milotic. And this Milotic, I tell you, was the bane of my existence. Whenever I came in with Fudge, she immediately lowered his HP below half, which means I have to get out. He was also confused straight away. Then, same into Big Hands. Big Hands is usually like my tank, right? So I usually count on him for two like wall Pokemon, stuff like that. Uh, judging that Militic doesn't have anything super effective, I was pretty confident in sending him in. But he was going under the same faith as Fudge. So that was not an option. Then my last resort was Big Face. Big Face being like, he resists water. Big Face comes out, actually shows some good damage, well decent damage, not good damage. Gets lucky with the crit, otherwise it would never have happened. So yeah, if you're doing a Nuzlocke in this game, please beware of Jennifer. Just a bit later this happened, so yeah, obviously I was going to catch it because it doesn't break out Nuzlocke whenever it's a shiny Pokemon, right? You have to always catch the shinies. So I did. Got me a shiny Gloom, which is like the fourth shiny half through all my playthroughs, which is, I guess, still lucky, but still. I was just walking my way downtown, minding my business, until suddenly I was stopped by May. So it's time for another rival battle. Rival battles now always have me like a bit stressed because I failed to rival battle the first, the single first attempt I actually played a Nuzlocke. So that's why it had me stressed out a little bit every single time, but I mean, I manage a lot better now than I did in the past, as you can see. May's Pokemon go down in the same fashion to Rock Tomb, Giga Drain, Surf and Poison Jab. Next up is us chasing Archie in his submarine throughout his entire base where some funny things happen. All in all, not too big a deal. However, we are obviously too late. After fighting off some grunts and an admin, we don't really make it in time and we see my Archie go underwater. You guys guessed it, next gym battle is Liza and Tate. And I must admit this was pretty disappointing. 
I felt like um, in previous times I fought them through playthroughs, previous playthroughs of like the early versions of the game. I didn't feel like they were so easy. They were actually, they felt pretty tough. But in this time around, it was like very, very, very pathetic. Like literally, as you can see, it's just one move per Pokemon actually. And um, that's just it. It was over pretty early, pretty fast. Um, disappointing fight, not gonna lie. But hey, it is what it is. You won't hear me complain in a Nuzlocke, in a hardcore Nuzlocke, right? Um, so yeah, that's the batch. Easy, nice and done. Next main story plot is the fact that Archie has some plans with Kyogre, it seems. Now, a lot of blah 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 blah, but then he starts the fight. Now Archie, ho ho Archie. He's a tough challenge since a while, right? I haven't fought anyone seriously for a while. And his first couple Pokemon don't really form a threat, but then he puts his Mega Sharpedo out. And the sad part is, Archie wasn't even done here. There is more. But let's be honest, there's only so much he can do. I was very sad for these two Pokemon because I kept them around for a very long time. They were also very, very useful. I actually felt like very good about, for example, for Survivor into Elite Four even. But it is what it is. We did what we had to do. So of course Kyogre flees, uh, you chase him, I chase him, I put on a cool spacesuit actually, and with the spacesuit we go underwater, for some reason, I mean, I can't explain it, maybe someone else can, but I like the suit, it looks really good. Either way, we follow Kyogre into this cave, where we actually fight him. Actually another one of my worst moments in the game, because I lose two Pokemon here. Well, both of which I thought were way more tankier. Of course, Hariyama being a big time favorite as well. This is huge. This is actually very painful for me. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to forgive Kyogre for uh, Hariyama, man. At this point the next challenge to overcome is Wallace, which is the final gym badge and the 8th as well, which means you can go into the Pokemon League after this. Now my strategy here was just to set up with Fudge. Yes I know, nobody's seen a Butterfree at this stage in the game, but it's a Nuzlocke, I dealt with what I had to deal with and he set up really, rather well with uh, Quiver Dance, S very much so that he even uh, one shot the Melodic with a Giga Drain, so that's like, it's not a stab move for Butterfree, which is kind of insane. Either way, did really well. So much so that I didn't need anything else for this challenge. And yes, I did in fact just solo the entire last gym of the home region with a Butterfree. GG. How about that for the newest meta? As a Nuzlocker, let's go. Of course, we all know the actual final challenge before you get into the Pokemon League is Wally. Right before it, he I think he just waits you up by the Pokemon League. Either way, he's actually he's got a decent team. Don't underestimate it. Uh, me, myself, I actually had a fairly good team to counter his. For example, Prism with the Ice Beam into Altaria. Fairly easy one shot. Actually, I should have gone for the one shot on Roselia as well with the same move, but it doesn't matter all too much. I mean, I'm glad I switched into Lava Plume after all, because um, because of him switching into Magneton, right? Which I, which is something I don't understand. He goes with a Magneton, which is Steel, Electric. He goes into a Ground Fire Pokemon. I mean, to each their own, I guess, but I decide to set up Big Face as soon as possible, because I know I'm, I'm going to be needing him later in the, in the match. Like, for example, for the last Pokemon. That's why I'm actually going into it now. Already setting up, making sure I actually have the advantage on already being in there, right? He's level 50 now, which is really strong, right? Of course. But the thing I struggled with a lot is uh, getting physical moves on him. 
because most of his moves he learned were special, whereas he had more attack than special attack, right? I think he always will. But his attack was really, really good. So therefore, easy wins. Next up, Pokemon League. So after beating Wally, the main thing was deciding on a team to go into the Pokemon League, and then obviously clearing the Pokemon lead with said team. Now this team was very very difficult for me, because I had some good Pokemon in the bench that could be used, but not all of them were as useful, and there is a lot, a lot, a lot of water Pokemon in my bench. As you can see, I'll show a picture right here. There is a lot of water Pokemon, so therefore I, ha I don't have a lot of... Uh, variation in my types for Pokemon, which means also moves will be very limited. Either way, as you can see, this is a team. The main doubts I had were Beautifly, Bennett and Magnezone. Sharpedo was mainly just for surfing fast, right? Or diving fast. But um, those three Pokemon were the main doubts I had. Um, I wondered about this a long, long, long time. I also like checked a lot of, I had an excel sheet for this, which you can see as well, uh, which I used a lot. I was, I think I, I, I looked at the excel for around three hours in total, I guess. But in the end, I decided on a team and this is the team. As you see the team immediately, it sticks out the fact that there is a four out of six water Pokemon, but the cause is in what I just explained before. Now, even still, even still, the team is pretty decent and we have good variation due to secondary types as in ground, poison, flying, which is very, very good. My main doubts were Agron versus Magnezone and Volcano versus Banet, but I ended up with these two. Agron mainly because he's got the better Mega Evolution and Volcano mainly because of his typing, which was rather convenient even though its hidden power is water first up is Sydney which is the dark type trainer from the Pokemon League um, and he starts out with Mightyena also has a Shiftry, Cacturn, Sharpedo and Absol for which I counted on my Tentacruel to actually do a lot of work against because Tentacruel is fairly defensive I should be able to take some hits and lash out a lot of damage first at least Shiftry, Cacturn Actually everyone, since he's equipped with the pixie plate and has this in Gleam, of course, right? So he obviously starts out with Magiena with the Intimidate, which does nothing for my Tentacruel. Tentacruel should be fine, Tentacruel is especially offensive. Shift 3 comes out, now I expected to one-shot this guy as well, but of course a fake out comes, which is not an issue at all. It's just a little bit of damage. The Sludge Wave obviously finishing off Shift 3 in one go. Next up is Absol. Now Absol was a bit different because I didn't feel like I could one-shot it and I felt like it had a lot of damage through the crits, right, whenever it crits Night Slash. So I decided to go defensive. <laughs> defensive being Agron, which is like just a total beast at this moment, right? I mean, he's mega evol evolved. He's got like no moves that they can do that's super effective. Except for Sharpedo, of course, but apparently it doesn't go for it, so that's fine with me. I do, of course, have Brick Break being super effective for his Dark types, which is good for me. Cacturn is neutral damage, but it doesn't matter. It's strong enough to take it out anyway, so Sydney is gone. Now for the next fight, that's against Phoebe, which is Ghost type Pokemon. I switch around some items, for example, I get Spooky Plate on Not So Jelly to uh, boost his Hex, which is good for his Ghost. Obviously, MVP gets the Gyaradosite, which makes him Dark type with the Crunch. That's gonna be very, very, very good. Um, I switch out Big Face to get Splash Plate, Mike to get a Bright Powder, because you can only get one guy with Mega Evolution, right? As for Phoebe's team, there's not too many, or at least only one secondary type which means she's fully ghost which means it should be fairly straightforward definitely if i can like, succeed in my strategy of setting mvp up with some dragon dances mega evolving and then just sweeping from there as promised i go with strategy of mega evolution into dragon dance here plus one speed plus one attack 
which means I will be pretty strong with the crunch. But problem is, Dustlops goes for Curse, which halves his HP and trades that for 25% of my HP every single turn, which means I'm in danger here. I can't stay in forever. Definitely, definitely not against five Pokemon, considering I only have four turns to live. Now, I switch out Gyarados here because I don't think I will live another turn and have 25% of my HP left as a safety guard zone for the curse damage, of course, right? So I switch into Big Face, expecting a Thunder Punch, actually. After this, Big Face decides to just sweep in a very, very boring manner, as in just spamming Waterfall or when it does get a one-shot on every single one of them, which did surprise me at this point. I didn't expect it, but it's a welcome surprise, obviously. Al although I think Waterfall still is a good move in general, I didn't expect to deal this much damage with it, because I'm one-shotting these, right? Now the thing is, I have to be honest and say I out-level her a little bit at this point, because I have set my level at the last Elite Four members' ace, which is 55, and that means that I'm out leveling the first three Elite Four members just to be able to have a chance versus Steven, of course, right? I think that's a viable option, and it's actually done in hardcore Nuzlux commonly. Next up will be Glacier. Glacier is, of course, the ice type trainer. The main changes to my team were Splash Plate on Gyarados and Agronaut back on Mike. As for Glacier's team, it's obviously Ice combined with Ghost and Water. As she has two Frostlasses, which have the Ice Ghost dual type, two Glalies, which are just Ice, and Wolverine with Water and Ice. The strategy here was actually exactly the same as last time. Just get Garak does in, set up a little bit with Dragon Dances. Like, I think one or two, I think I do two in this one. Uh, and then start sweeping. And that's basically also what happened. So just first Glalie come out. There is ov obviously two of them, right? First Glalie comes out, I start setting up. You can see right here, it doesn't actually deal any damage at all whatsoever. So I just go for the waterfall. Easy one, one out. The hail does tick damage, but it's not problematic. Also, like the frost slash, I have crunch for that, which is super effective. Even though I decide to not go for it. Because Waterfall can even flinch if it's got like, I don't know, I think I was thinking of uh, Sturdy or some reason. But um, I went for Waterfall instead, which is, damage wise, it should probably still be similar to Crunch considering Stab bonus, right? Allrin misses the Blizzard, considering the hail is no longer up. I get off the crunch, she full restores, which usually means she loses at that point, because that means I have 3 turns. As she heals, I will just chip down the damage once more, and repeat, until I actually get it, so that's the game basically. Lost clearly comes out, but obviously same faith as the first one, so there it is, that was Glacia done. And last but not least is Drake, the dragon type Elite 4 member. Now obviously I made some obvious choices here, like for example, Not So Jelly gets Pixie played again, Agron keeps his Agronite, MVP goes Dread Plate, and Prism gets the Expert Belt for the couple Ice Beams she can pull off probably. Big Face gets a Stone Plate, which is like sort of irrelevant, you'll see, but uh, yeah, that's the small change that I made to the team for myself. As for Drake himself, his team looks or sounds intimidating if you look at it, but in general he has 4 Pokemon that are 4 times weak to Ice, which means that it's 4 Pokemon that are gonna be a one shot from an Ice Beam from Prism for example, so yeah, it's not that big of a deal. In fact, I would even say it makes him very 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 vulnerable. Sure enough, as you can see here, he starts with Altaria, I start with Prism, Prism has Ice Beam with Expert Belt equipped. Altaria is 4 times weak to this move, so Altaria will die 100%. Actually same for Flygon, also 4 times weak to Ice Beam. Switches in regardless, which is kind of funny to me. Um, 
the one notable thing that did happen during this fight was me learning Heavy Slam over Iron Head for Agron. Because the weight of Agron is just so high that actually it's a better move in a lot of the cases. Better than Iron Head. Either way, brings out Salamence. Salamence, same fate, just dies to an Ice Beam because his first time's weak to it. Second Flycon, same story. Goes out again. Then the last Pokemon, which is Kingdra, is actually the only one I can't one shot. I th I wanted to Toxic it because I thought I didn't have the damage to ki to actually kill it. But if you look at the Ice Beam, it's still huge. So didn't matter regardless. Easy fight. I must say I'm sorry about that Drake, but really disappointing actually. All right then. On to the champion fight. Champion is Steven Stone. Steven Stone, uh, the only actual changes I made to my items are Fistblade on Big Face. Because he has Powder Punch, I intended to use it, but you'll see how that end up, ends up. Other change is not so jelly with a Spooky Blade, but that's not necessarily relevant. As for Steven's team, he's mainly focused on Steel-type Pokemon, but he has other types as well. Like for example, he has a Skarmory, Claydol, Agron, Cradley, Armaldo, and Metagross. Metagross being his ace and therefore being able to Mega Evolve. And here we have it, the final challenge. Final challenge being Steven Stone. We met his dad even in this game. But yeah, Steven is like... There is a uh, post-game battle as well for Steven. But I decided not to go for this, I decided to just go up until Pokemon League. Now, I start off with Gyarados, try the same tactic as I have always been doing, which is just going for uh, Dragon Dances. Set up, try to set up as fast as possible so I can sweep this entire team. Gyarados is strong enough to pull that off. But I get unfortunately toxic, which means my turns are n numbered, meaning I can't kill all of them. And... Worse even, Skarmory is very defensive, and in this case he just, he tanked my waterfall, which is embarrassing actually. <laughs> I was already at plus, I think, two. <laughs> now, well, the thing is, in this run, I actually already set up my challenge beforehand, which means I set out to kill the Pokemon League and then move on. Meaning that you will see me losing Pokemon in the most irresponsible ways possible but that's actually all planned and in mind uh, with the fact that I won't be playing after the Pokemon League in this game first example being Gyarados and then next example you'll see soon you know I stay in versus Cradley with my Swampert whereas I'm not even one-shotting it obviously I survive a lucky first hit which is crazy actually if you think about it it's four times effective um, but I stay in anyway, and then I figured because the first hit actually dealt a lot of damage I expected to deal more damage this time because of the plus one attack But obviously the first one was crit and I miscalculated and uh, That's coming back to bite me The thing is though if this would have worked if I could have set up power punches on Swampert That would have been very very nice as well because he's like he packs a punch in general and then powered up, that's just gonna be insane. However, easy choice, I just switch into Agron, which is fairly much a tank for anything he has. He cannot deal anything to Agron, also one of the reasons that Agron made it to the team. Well, except for Claydol, obviously. Claydol's earth attacks are probably going to be very problematic for Mi Mike, but Mike is very, very, very tanky in general. So I figured he could take a hit. But obviously he goes for uh, Reflected, which kind of trumps my uh, Mike's power, because Mike is very defensive. Offensively he can be good, but with a Reflect up, that's gonna change, obviously. And I decided to switch after all, regarding the fact I don't have to risk anything if I still have my Prism in the back line. Which Prism, Prism made like short work of Claydol. Uh, same for Armaldo, short work, just one scald and did both of them in, so that's really good. 
but I also actually expect it as Prism has been very very strong in these situations. Then Prism versus Metagross, this was where I was like, okay, how is this gonna end up? Because like Metagross is mega evolving, of course, right? And backs a very very big punch. He also has like Giga Impact, which is a move with over 100 base power. And I wasn't really sure how I could be dealing with it. The thing I tried to do here was go for a Scald and maybe get a burn off. Actually get lucky and he does get the burn off. Burn means that Metagross's attack is halved. So after uh, the second Scald he just dies to the burn. And I tank even the Giga Impact. So that's amazing actually. Insane. I'm very happy I got Prism. But I don't expect to have it in any other playthroughs like I said actually getting prism is very very lucky definitely in the Nuzlocke because only the first encounter counts and I think I had a 5% chance of getting it when fishing as combined to the fact that it's not in the beginning of the route so I had to actually dodge a lot of grass before I made it there but I'm very very glad I did so in the end prism was definitely the factor that made me win this game either way this is me Standing in front of the Hall of Fame, enjoying my fame as the champion with my team, obviously. Gerdos, Tentacruel, Milotic, Agron, Camerupt, and Swampert. Beast team, 4 out of 6 water Pokemon, which is fairly... <laughs> I did expect something almost, because... This game has a lot of water routes, which means you are going to catch, in general, more water Pokemon. That makes sense. But, uh, yeah, that was my first Nuzlocke, actually. Alright, guys, just one more thing. Who is that? Dearly departed Pokemon.